testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Block Podcast on YouTube. It's good to be back. I know it's been a while. Um, it's really good to be back. A uh, lot to get into. I want to explain where I've been. You know, I've been busy with MCR Podcast. I'm still doing that. Hopefully, me and Matt should be back uh, with the show either Saturday or Sunday. Um, this isn't um, – in place of that, this is an addition to that. Um, but I want to get into a, a lot to get into. Uh, Ryan Garcia has been calling everybody. We've stirred up some controversy here on Facebook with our take on that. Uh, check out the article on 3D Boxing Blog where we break down um, Ryan Garcia's next fight, uh, which everyone is thinking it's going to be against Linares, although uh, Linares is not in this country. Um, I don't know with the pandemic if he's going to be allowed to travel, how much of a headache that is. Um, that fight's just a month and a half away now, July 4th. Um, so I don't know if that fight's realistic, uh, but Garcia has been busy calling everybody else out. Um, he's called out, uh, obviously, Tank Davis. He's called out Abner Mares. He's called out Devin Haney. He's called out a UFC guy I've never heard of, Sahedo, Henry Sahedo. Is that his name? Um, so he's been busy. Um, I don't know what's going to happen or who they have slated for him to fight on July 4th. There was a rumor of Hector Tanahara, which is what I'm spending this episode. That's what we're going to talk about, the Hector Tanahara uh, fight, because that's realistic. Not only is it realistic, it's an excellent fight. Um, and it's exactly what Golden Boy needs. Um, I, I know a lot of you, uh, you know, we put on Facebook, which caught a lot of, uh, you know, a lot, lot of debate we, that Tanahara would win that fight. Um, it's Golden Boy's two lightweight prospects. Lightweight is the absolute most blue chip loaded division in boxing right now. There's so much young talent. Um, you know that's a division that even a guy uh, like Omar Juarez is going to go back down to. Right, he fights at 140 now, um, but we've been told several times that 140 is not a problem. Neither is 135. You know when he starts taking up a step, a step up in competition, um, he's going to be fighting at 135. So we, you're going to have guys. Um, you know, obviously Tiafimo, who, who's already got a belt, Devin, who has an email belt. Then you have Ryan Garcia, Hector Tanahara. That division is absolutely loaded. Um, look, and Garcia was the first one, right? Like, Gar Garcia caught a lot of attention. You know, obviously he has the movie star looks. He has, you know, millions of followers on Twitter and, and Instagram. He's a star. Um, and, and he can get big fights. He hasn't really beaten anyone of note. Like, in reality, his best win at this point still kind of is Jason Velez. Um, he's got wins over Dano, Romero Dano, who is really nobody, and then Fonseca, whose best wins are losses to Tank Davis and Tevin Farmer. I, I mean, this is... He doesn't have a great resume. His resume really isn't any better than Tanahara. And you're going to say, who did Tanahara beat? Well, Tanahara just beat Juan Carlos Burgos, former world title challenger, good fighter. Um, it's, Burgos is also the best name on Devin Haney's resume. And Devin Haney has an email world title. But he's also got wins over Delgado, who's a tough guy. He's got a, a win over a guy named Robert uh, Manzanares, who's 36-2. and two. He's got wins over uh, Roger, Guti Roger Gutierrez. He's got a lot of wins. Um, he hasn't, for a guy who doesn't have a lot of limelight, a lot of fanfare in Tanahara, he hasn't been matched very easily. Um, so when we talk about their resumes, there's not that much different. And Garcia really hasn't lost a round. I mean, uh, Tanahara really hasn't lost a round. This is a fight Tanahara wants. Right? He called him out uh, back in Dallas. Uh, when, last August, when he beat Ezekiel Avila's unanimous decision, when he was our prospect of the month, this is a fight that Tanahara wants, and it should be makeable. And Golden Boy should want to make it. And here's why: um, the winner is a star. Garcia, if he wins, he's a star anyway. It's a good win, um, and it propels him to fight one of the other young stars in the division. 
whether that be Tank Davis, whether that be T.P. Lopez, whether that be Devin Haney, whoever it is. That's if Garcia wins. We're assuming that he doesn't win, okay? I'm thinking heck, Tanahara wins the fight. We can, we're going to get into why. If if Tanahara wins, now you have two stars, right? Because, uh, it, you know, it's it's the only fight available. It's the only fight Golden Boy has. It's the only fight on television, right, because of this pandemic. It's the first fight back. You're going to have a ton of eyes on it, literally millions of eyes, because fi- finally have boxing again. Tanahara has all the skills, right? It's a fight that if he wins, he's going to look superb doing it. He's going to beat the young superstar, which will make him a star. So now you have two stars in that loaded division. Tanahara has also been linked to Devin Haney. Tanahara thinks he's going to get both these fights. He thinks he can win both these fights. Maybe he can. But he, he that Tanahara fight, as per uh, the Tanahara Devin Haney fight, as per Eddie Hearn, and as per Hector Tanahara, and uh, has been offered to Tanahara. Uh, I, that's going to get made at some point, whether that's whatever boxing returns or, or after that fight's going to happen. It probably wasn't worth the risk for Tanahara um, to take it when it was offered to him last October. There probably wasn't enough money in it. You want to make it more valuable? Go beat Ryan Garcia, which Tanahara can. If you beat Ryan Garcia, now, now you, you can demand a big, hefty payday because you have the best win. Devin Haney's best win is Burgos. That's also Tanahara's best win. Tanahara clearly beat him better. Like He's the one guy, because of maybe the lack of power, he's not getting the fanfare that the other guys in the division are. He's the most skilled, most sharp, most ready, pro-ready of the – excluding Tiafimo. Right of of the young guys, Tiafimo is at a different level right now, uh, and he's got to win over Kome. The other guys, Garcia, Tanahara, and Devin Haney. Gar- at this point, Tanahara is the best fighter. And I know you guys are gonna huff and puff and stomp your feet and whine and complain that I said that, but it's true. Look, him and Devin Haney's best wins both against Burgos. Who beat him better? Tanahara did, and a- a- and clearly did. He doesn't lose a round, Tanahara. I know he got knocked down early. We're not talking about it, early in his career. Since then, he, he he has fought a respectable level of competition like the other guys have. Not not much different than Garcia and Haney. And he doesn't lose a round. I, I know he doesn't have the sensational speed and sensational power, but he is sharp as can be. He can fight ba- backwards, forwards. Uh, he shows in his last fight against Burgos. He can fight in the clinch. He can fight on the inside, too. So he's got so many more gear at this point than Ryan Garcia. And we'll, we'll, we'll start in that. Ryan Garcia is a sensational talent. He's got great speed. He's got great power. And I keep getting told that he's markedly re- improved uh, in the Canelo camp with Reynoso. Do we know that? He really, ha- I mean, like, he's got two sensational knockouts, two first round knockouts. He hasn't been tested, he hasn't been pushed. He fought to know who was no good. And then he fought a small guy whose best wins were losses, right? He fought Fonseca, whose best win was getting outclassed by Tevin Farmer at 130. Then he moved up to 135 and got blown up by a much bigger guy. I mean, that's not an impressive win. He fought a small guy with no good wins. And I, I don't think Fonseca is the worst thing in the world. I don't. I think he's a decent fighter. And Ryan blew him out. But what happens? He's not going to blow a ton of horror out. Can we agree on that? So what happens when someone offers resistance? What happens when someone can match you for speed? What happens when the person's got more skill than you? What happens when the person has more gears than you? How is Ryan Garcia going to respond? He didn't respond well against Velez. That's for sure. Uh, he, uh, and then what was what, what, what was the other fight? It was uh, the, the Velez fight and then the uh, Carlos Morales fight. He didn't respond well in either of those fights. Those were back-to-back. And then they took big steps back with them. Those, that was back in, in 2018. Wow, that last fight was two years ago. I'm not saying he hasn't gotten better, but that's still his best win. And then he looked even worse in the Carlos Morales fight, and then they backed him off a little bit. He wasn't ready for prime time. Then I, uh, and those guys don't have an eighth of the skill that Tanahara has. So if he struggled with those, yes, he's better today. But how much better? I don't know. He hasn't really been tested. He fought a bunch of nobodies, and then he blew two guys out. Unless you think he's going to blow Tanahara out like he did to Fonseca, that Fonseca fight doesn't show us anything other than he has good power in three, which we already knew. I want to make this comparison um, with Ryan Garcia. And if you guys are basketball fans, you'll get it. Zach Levine plays for the Chicago Bulls. 
super explosive, right? Great athlete, great first step, and can blow past you and dunk on you at will. What happens when he can't blow past you? What other gears does he have? Well, well, nothing. That's all he can do. If he can't blow past you, he can't do anything. That's kind of how I see Ryan Garcia at this point. Yes, if he can't outclass you, there's not much he can do. And we saw that with the Velez and the Morales fight. Now, maybe he's gotten better, but we haven't seen that because he hasn't been tested yet. Because after that, he fought subpar competition. And then the two fights he stepped up on, he blew both guys out. So we don't know how he's going to respond when someone can match him for craft. Right? And and Velaz and Morales aren't superb craftsmen who are super sharp like Tanahara. Tanahara can, Tanahara can suit, sit in the pocket and sharpshoot you and outpoint you. All right? He's pretty physically strong. He can fight coming forward. And we saw in the Burgos fight, now this is not where he wants to be with Ryan Garcia, but he can outland Garcia on the inside. Now he doesn't want to be in there because Garcia is such a big hitter. And, and Tanahara's lack of pop is always going to be his Achilles heel. Um, but at this point, this early stage in their career, Tanahar is the better boxer. Tanahar can outpoint them. Tanahar can frustrate them and beat them. And I, look, this is not a hometown pick because I'm from Texas and he's from Texas. Um, I, I've watched his career unfold. He's the better boxer. He's the better pure boxer. He's the better craftsman. He's the more skilled boxer with more tools in the toolbox. He's got more tools in the toolbox than Devin Haney. And if he fought Devin Haney tomorrow, I'd pick Tanahar. Now, Devin Haney has a higher ceiling because of his athleticism. Devin Haney's got insane athleticism. But I don't think his skills are as sharp as Tanahara's is. Tanahara is, is complete. His skills are good. He doesn't waste punches. He can fight. He gives you angles. He can. You know, there's so much he can do that these other guys can't do. Uh, we should go back and, and do a film study of Tanahara and his timing and his fundamentals. The kid's are really, really good. and I, I don't think as... As talented and athletic as Garcia and Haney are, they are equipped to deal with his skill at this particular time. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.